Greetings and welcome to another exploration into the old world. In this video we're going to be taking a look at Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And as we zoom into South Dakota we can see Sioux Falls here at the crossroads of two major highways surrounded by cities like Omaha, Des Moines, Minneapolis, cities we've covered here on this channel. I'm starting this video with the Queen Bee Flour Mill. Uh, that makes up the falls region of Sioux Falls. Interesting story surrounding this. Apparently it only ran for two years and then they found out it wasn't a good idea to begin with. Uh, I do have a short video clip I'll play after this segment um, that will give you a bit more information on that. You can see we have a multi-storied structure, um, stone brick looking structure. And we also take a closer look at the falls themselves and see that the color is the same as the stone and brickwork over here. And if you're into the field of meltology, you might have some questions as to how this area came to be. And there's a closer look. And there's the ruins of the mill, which is apparently on the Nas National Register Registrar of Historic Places, as you'll see in the video. But looking, to me, looking post-cataclysm, not really looking like a natural set of falls, but looking like something happened here. And it really makes me question the narrative, as I like to do here on this channel. So check this video out. It'll give you a bit of a backstory and a likely story on the history of South Dakota. And then we'll continue with our photos. Historic downtown Sioux Falls, when trolley rides were a nickel. A sharp-eyed detective can still find many reminders of times long past, reminders of what life was like in early Sioux Falls. How did the city begin? Who lived here? Why did they come? And how did the city grow? What did people do for fun? How did they dress? And how did they travel? The clues remain for those who look closely. The first settlers to arrive were not homesteading farmers, they were land developers. They hoped to get rich by claiming the best town sites before the arrival of railroads and settlers, so they could sell building lots to the people who were sure to arrive later. These land speculators came seeking the impressive falls that they had heard about. The natural beauty and potential water power for industry made the place a natural choice for a new city. One of the earliest industries to use water power was the massive Queen Bee Mill built to grind grain. It was a dismal failure that closed two years after it opened. There wasn't enough wheat and the water flow wasn't dependable. The Queen Bee burned in a spectacular fire in 1956. Its walls were torn down, and the ruins that remain are now on the National Register of Historic Places. But imagine what the Dakota region looked like when these fortune seekers first set out for the falls. The prairie had almost no trees. As far as the eye could see in every direction, there was nothing but a vast sea of tall grass growing as high as a man's shoulders. Great undulating waves of motion swept through the wind-driven grass. They must have felt tremendous excitement when they, at last, crested the bluff to look down into the valley of the Big Sioux River. For the river and falls were indeed a special place. They stood out in this huge, empty prairie like an oasis in a desert. Richard Pettigrew, our first senator, had this oil painting made to show what Sioux Falls looked like when he arrived in 1869. 12 years after the first arrivals claimed. The stores were small wood frame buildings like these on Phillips Avenue in 1872. At that time, the streets were simple dirt roads. Five years later, in 1877, wooden sidewalks were added to Phillips Avenue to make it easier to get around. These wood walkways were built eight feet wide and constructed of one inch thick lumber, like this one in front of the E.G. Wright Law Office as it appeared in 1880. Longtime city residents know that downtown was transformed by urban renewal in the 1970s 
when whole blocks full of historic buildings were demolished to make room for the new library, the downtown Holiday Inn Hotel, and new banks, office buildings, and parking ramps. But the appearance of downtown saw dramatic sweeping changes almost 90 years before urban renewal began. While it was the falls that first brought people here, it was the arrival of the railroads that sparked explosive growth. The railroads brought thousands of settlers to South Dakota, ushering in a period of great economic growth and prosperity. The first train steamed into downtown Sioux Falls on August 1st, 1878. The train service had a dramatic impact on Sioux Falls. Within three years, the city of 600 residents grew to 2,164. This bird's eye view map was drawn just a few years after the first railroad arrived. It shows what the city looked like when it had just over 2,000 residents. The road on the outskirts of the city at the top of the map is Prairie Avenue. The road at the city's southern edge is 14th Street. Nearly all of these buildings are within the area that is now our downtown. Note that the islands are still prominent features of the city. More rail lines were soon to come, and the city in this picture was about to be transformed with even more new growth. The city's population of 2,164 residents in 1880 exploded to over 10,000 residents at the end of the decade. The 1880s came to be remembered as the Great Dakota Boom Decade. Eventually, the city was served by seven different railroads, bringing more prosperity and even more rapid growth. This tremendous rapid growth did more than bring new people. The look of downtown and the city itself changed at a galloping pace as a result of the prosperity and access to materials brought by the rails. Phillips Avenue, which once looked like this with its small shops, looked like this by 1900. Most of the modest wood frame buildings were replaced by large grand structures built of brick and stone. Sioux Falls boasted all the features and amenities of a major city. And a very interesting point and a, something that needs to be mentioned here, I think uh, they talked about that building boom in the decade before the 19, before 1900. You can see there's really no growth here going on um, according to the census in, uh, in Sioux Falls. Um, yet we're to believe that all of these stone and brick buildings were being thrown up in a city, really not a very large city whatsoever. Um, a lot of the growth happening here in our, our modern day. And as we look into the past and see all of these structures that we are told shot up in the 1890s, um, we have to do the math and really scratch our heads, I think. Here we have an interesting parade at an early time. You can see the tracks, so Sioux Falls having the trolley car. Um, again, you have to ask the question why. If you're into the old world research, you know that uh, we just suspect that the trolley car was a part of the old world transportation system. It doesn't make a lot of sense to think that all of this shot up so, so briefly and then was all replaced so quickly with automobiles. So there's a lot of holes in that narrative and there's reason to question the timeline. The timeline is the biggest question in this field of research for me. And I think a lot of it has been condensed and other parts of it have been stretched. Um, and it really creates and causes confusion when we look into the past. This is the Phillips block of buildings and you can see again all the indications of uh, old world construction. This is from Sioux City. I left it in there. Not far away, Sioux City. When you're doing a search for Sioux Falls, Sioux City comes up a lot. Um, but the neighbor to the south, Sioux City, also having a lot of this type of construction. Back to Sioux Falls, though. And this building was difficult to find as well. We'll see it as we move forward. That's the Masonic Temple. Very difficult to find. It took me a long time in a search to discover that that building even existed. So many of the structures in Sioux Falls have this very uh, rough-looking stone construction here. 
very difficult to achieve this type of construction and I think the argument would be while well, they didn't have a lot of wood because they were on the prairies here you have basement windows um, but they had a lot of stone apparently or they're pulling it from the river um, very difficult to achieve this type of construction especially at that early time time period and again we have a very small population here's the auditorium you can see a shot from the front here see it a little bit better looking like the uh, fire hall was running out of here for a time we do have uh, shots of the another fire hall let's say the mini haha -ha building you can see again that stone look I do wonder if we're looking at damage um, like uh, bulging of the block work often crosses my mind I can't say I don't know for sure it's all speculation all of what we're doing on this channel is speculation we're trying to connect dots that uh, fairly far apart sometimes hard to uh, make those connections but I do like to provide you with the visuals we have a cathedral of course in Sioux Falls looking like something out of old world Italy with some polished marble columns beautiful structure of course no construction photos on that despite the fact that it was in 1917 to 1919 a two-year build time on that with a fantastic pipe organ. And as I always like to say on this channel, if you know any more about the area, please do um, put something in the comment section, add to the story. If you feel so inclined if you, to provide the mainstream historical narrative to rebut what I'm saying here, that's fine too. But please do it in a polite way or you're going to hear from me. We're questioning the narrative here. If you're not comfortable with that, you don't have to be here. This is a children's home. Stone Church. <laughs> First Baptist Church could have easily been a bank. Um, looking like this has been built up and dug out. Most certainly. Very interesting. Uh, the Congregational Church, they're calling this. Again, very, very nice stonework going on here. Very detailed as well. The dental moldings here across, across the top, and you know, a rounded corner. It's so there's so much flair going on here when you take a closer look. Again, no population growth in that time period um, before 1900. You have to ask yourself the question: How many skilled hands did they have available to construct these buildings? when does the bottom fall out of the historical narrative or are you just willing to accept it at face value I, so you can see here the Episcopal Church not looking like much in the postcard still stands and as we get closer again we see that very very tight block work very 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 skilled um, block work going on here no shortage of the stonework going on here in uh, Sioux Falls Interesting part of the historical narrative around Sioux Falls, apparently divorcees flocked to Sioux Falls because it was legal to divorce there, so that was one of the reasons a lot of people moved there, we are told. Interesting. Check out the churches, though. First Methodist Episcopal, not looking like much in the postcard again, and then we have it standing in the modern day with the frivolous brickwork. Look at it. one two, three, four arches over this window. And they just decided to go herringbone for this several feet here. Spectacular brickwork. Hard to tell sometimes from the old postcards. And remember a lot of these were torn down. And this very grainy, apologies, I think it's Presbyterian. But no doubt that would have had a very similar uh, brickwork. On part of the old college, you can see the stonework again. Let me know when you think this starts to become absurd uh, from a construction standpoint that all of these buildings were shooting up. And let's give the narrative the benefit of the doubt and let's take another 10 years and say a lot of these were built in this first decade of the uh, 20th century. We still don't have a lot of growth here, um, not like we've seen in other cities. Very small city even at this point 14,000 people so pretty much everything I'm showing you here is coming out of this time period 
and a city set, set with such a small population apparently needed a coliseum and an auditorium. Here's the front of that coliseum. And again, you can see how elaborate and detailed. And there's the face at the top. Nice looking structure. Would take a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of skilled hands. And no, we are still in Sioux Falls. I did, we didn't magically jump to Toronto or something like that. This is the courthouse um, in Sioux Falls, built in 1890, when there was 10,000 people living there, we are told. And of course the naysayers come to my channel and say, oh, they brought in skilled hands from the major centers nearby to get this done. Well, if you research those major centers, you're going to find out that they were doing the same thing there, and there's no way they could spare the skilled hands to make the trip to Sioux Falls to build a courthouse like this. Look at this thing. Still stands. They should have knocked this one down. This one sticks out like a sore thumb in the narrative, if you ask me. Now it's the old courthouse museum, but you can see the impeccable block work. Take a look at the size of the... You have a narrow row and a thick row and a narrow row and a thick row. Very tight arches. And here's a look at it. Standing immensely over the downtown area of Sioux Falls. Who's doing this work? Who did this in 1890? Is that, what is that, one piece? Is that molded? Is that one piece of stone? Anyone like to tell me? We have a bit of a balcony. It looks like a solid stone balcony. Detailed. That's an old world banger, as I like to say. Please, detractors and naysayers, let me know what you think. There's that salmon-colored column we see, so often in these, what they'll say, Richardsonian Romanesque style buildings. And they'll say it has to fit the timeline because um, H. H. Richardson lived in this time period, so it had to be from that time period. These are all, um, they're all trying to knock you off the scent as far as I'm concerned. This is so much more to the story. Hard to trust or believe any of it. Of course we have the Elks Club. And here's a bit of the interior of the Elks Club had to have your gentlemen's clubs in all of these small towns at that early time period. Again, the stone. And you can see we have the stone paved streets as well, or brick paved streets, and the rail cars. And does it really make sense, the horse and buggy era, does it really make sense for a city of 10,000 people to have shot up like this? Hmm. What do you think? You know what I think, what do you think? modern day and this is what it used to look like so they've taken the bell tower off you can see here in the modern day chop as they like to do decapitate these old world structures several hospitals old hospitals in Sioux Falls you can again see the stonework we'll move through them fairly quickly here another one with a nice big brick stack in the background the veterans hospital massive structure massive complex still stands here we have it today let's see have they scaled back this part i don't think they have looks the same hard to make this one out but it is a hospital some of these are fairly grainy and were hard to dig up did my best to bring you as much as i could from sioux falls here we have the first hotel cataract 1871 to 1883. I don't even have a census for 1870s. A census begins in 1880 with 2,000 people. Well, are we to believe there was, what, a thousand people here living in Sioux Falls when this was constructed? Certainly they didn't need to put a massive roof on that. They could have left it at a three-story hotel with a basement, as you can see. You can see the railing there on the lower level. And there's the next Cataract Hotel. Fancy old stone house, because that's how we do it in Sioux Falls in the 1800s. And not just the house, but the white retaining wall in front. Spectacular stonework. They must have had a bunch of uh, German or Italian immigrants doing all this stonework, as the narrative usually goes. We have a penitentiary made of stone, of course, because that's how you keep the prisoners out. 
with uh, I don't know, is that a water tower? I'm not sure exactly what they're calling this, but a watchtower probably for a penitentiary with these beautiful flares coming down. I have a few more shots of the penitentiary here in the old horse and buggy days. We have very impeccable stonework on a building and really awful looking landscaping. Looking very mudded, as we say, in this field of research. What do you think? And that's a good good uh, contrast. So this is what it looks like in the, the old photos, and as we get to the modern day, you can really see the depth of the building material itself. Again, we have um, a bay window, all made out of stone, with this bump-out area. The construction behind that is just... If you've done any construction work, it should boggle your mind. If you haven't done any and you take this for granted, then I don't know what to say to you. It's very difficult work. Oh, of course, the public library, which is made of stone, of course, because they didn't have wood. Of course, you would need wood scaffolding all around these structures just to build it, but let's leave that alone for, for a minute here. Again, let's look closer at the stone on the public library. Is that, is that a single piece of stone right there, flat stone? Hmm. Of course, they had mechanical advantage, ropes and pulleys. So certainly capable with the superheroes of the 1800s. Okay, the old Masonic Temple and Grand Lodge Library. Bit of a ghost of a building. Hard to find. Looking mudded. But here we have that old temple I was telling you about earlier on. And originally I thought I could only find it in this form but I did find a photo. And I really don't think that they want the, wanted this to survive down through time. And even if we look in the background, I think we're seeing structures I didn't even find. And if you watch that video that I, uh, I snipped up for you, if you watch the entire video, which I'll put in the description, uh, there are quite a few large industrial buildings made out of brick and stone that I did not even um, find in my search. This is a good look at the Masonic Temple and all the detail along the top there. Very interesting building. Very difficult to build. I think I know why they buried that. Because it does not fit the narrative. And of course we had the Odd Fellows Hall. There had to be some Odd Fellows in the vicinity doing their Odd Fellow stuff. The building still stands. Even on the side, you can see it's, hard, it's a little bit grainy, but it doesn't look like smooth brick. It looks like there's some bulging going on here. That's why I wonder if there's some heat damage. Not sure. Just speculating. This one looking a lot smoother. Beautiful buildings. 1887. Again, there's not even 10,000 people. And they have, they're building all these structures, we're told. And of course, they had to have a multi storied post office that looked a bit like a castle. <laughs> And we're told they built this in 1895, that decade where there was very little growth, but of course lots of physical growth, not population-wise, but they had they got busy building all these stone structures in the 1890s. Very, very thin narrative here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, making very little sense. Still stands to this day, spectacular structure. If you're in the area or passing through I certainly suggest taking a walk and taking in these magnificent old world structures. There it is again. You can see the basement windows. Try to imagine your local town of 10,000 people, if you live in one, um, constructing a building like this in our modern day. A lot of these structures to school structures and things that you really wouldn't expect. All Saints School, this one. Hard to tell, but you can see there's some detailed brickwork going on here. Arches. Here's a closer look at that, that work there, and the woodwork on it. <laughs> and it still stands. Magnificent looking structure. Look at the roof. Multicolored stone. There it is. We have the first unit of Catholic College and Academy of the Diocese of Sioux Falls, built in stone, of course, at a very early time period. Keeping those stone and brickies working. 
Got to keep him busy. At a deaf mute school. There it is. Like again, you can see that bulging rock work going on there. Let's go through a few more schools made of stone. High school. Lowell school, you can see. Stone, basements. Lutheran Normal College. Very grainy. Apologies for that. Best I could do. It's the only one I could find. The Whittier School. Whittier indeed. Hmm. There's a nice shot of that main street. With those, those teched out buildings. And shady characters in their hats. We're approaching the end of the file here. Uh, what's your take on Sioux Falls from what I've shown you here? Do you think there's more to the story or are we willing to swallow what we're told about history? We have a series of uh, entertainment venues here. The Grand Opera House, very short-lived, 12-year time period on that one. The Dreamland Theater, looks like a four-year time period on that. You have to wonder, is it older? Was it 1911 the time that they got rid of it? I think so. Egyptian theater, gone. Of course, you can tear that down. It's 1961, they took this thing down. The Emerson Showhouse, multi-storied brick structure. I'm drinking a lot of Val Blatz's Milwaukee beer there, it looks like. Of course, you have to drown your sorrows somehow, right? Germania Hall, 1880 to 1934, not a very long window of time here. Strange construction looking like a reclaimed building from the old world, to my eye. Majestic Theatre, a whole eight years. Apparently a new opera house, and it only stood from 98 to 1915. I know this is confusing because they don't look like the same structure. My guess is there were a whole bunch of buildings that uh, we don't even know about in these old towns, including Sioux Falls. And we're doing our best to dig into the past but not a lot have survived the test of time. This is a really interesting looking face to the building here. What did you expect from Sioux Falls? Did you expect this? Maybe if you're in this field of research you did expect this, but this is ridiculous. Ridiculous detailing. Look at the circular. It's absolutely ridiculous. Beautiful. And we have the new YMCA, not to be confused with the old YMCA. Again, with that intricate detailing from an early time period in Sioux Falls. Alright, that is all I have for you from this location. Stay tuned for the next one, and thank you for being here.